You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh all week long. Those balls have gotten you in trouble, though. Oh, you yeah. They picked us because we're horny. Yeah. Right. And that's your chronic state. That's what you've always said. <laughs> My life has changed so much that it's almost like a completely different life. From the latest news on The Real Housewives. I'm so happy to be here and engage with you. Deep dives into celebrity legal scandals and unfiltered convos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. Welcome on in, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Happy Monday. Um, okay, so are you ready? We got lots of tea to break down. We've got some Beverly Hills stuff because the sisters, the Richard sisters are popping off again, but this time it's on Instagram and not on the show. We've also got some Real Housewives of Potomac tea. Obviously, Real Housewives of Potomac season seven just premiered on Sunday. I haven't watched it yet because it hasn't aired yet here in Los Angeles because I'm taping this um, early, but... I will say I'm excited for the new season of Potomac, especially after these ladies started popping off on Twitter. Candace is popping off. Dr. Wendy's popping off. Mia's popping off. The new girl Jacqueline is popping off. So we'll break down all of that. But first, I did want to say that if you guys are enjoying the show, I would really, really appreciate if you took a moment, 10 seconds, literally just 10 seconds, ever since my uh, moment on Beverly Hills, I don't know what you want to call that, a a, a snippet feature, whatever you want to call it. Um, Ever since that, you know, obviously it brought out some of the trolls, and so they've lowered my rating on Apple, and they've dropped it down to a 4.4, and I would love to bring it back up. So I just want to say, if you do want to support me, Any podcaster, really. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only podcast that you guys listen to. But if you do want to support, it's free. All you have to do is just put five stars. If if you're liking the show, just five stars. I believe if you've done it before, you can do it again. Um, Obviously, if you want to leave a review, that's even more helpful. That's even greater. But if you just leave a rating or a review... Five stars would be amazing. Um, it really does help us podcasters. It helps us rank in the charts. It helps us, you know, continue to grow the show. It helps Apple realize that our show is is popping off. So if you want to support me and any podcaster, not just me, obviously, I would love it if you showed me love, but really just any any podcaster, um, please leave me a five-star rating or review. I would really appreciate it. Let me know what you're liking about the show, what you enjoy about it most, or five seconds, five-star rating literally um, does so much for us. So please and thank you. Hopefully you guys had a good weekend. We do have a lot to dive into. Hopefully if you had a long weekend, you had some no filter wine um, and hopefully you got to to enjoy that. Okay, so let's see. What do we want to start with? Do we want, let's start with Kathy versus Kyle, okay? Sister, sister, it's about to be a girl fight. So Alex Baskin, one of the executive producers on Real Houses of Beverly Hills, posted the reunion trailer to his Instagram account, okay? And people were obviously commenting on it. Kathy Hilton decided she was going to, throughout the weekend, pop off on a lot of different posts over the weekend. So she commented on Alex Baskin's Instagram post. I don't believe he's with Bravo anymore. I believe he's left Bravo. I don't know if he's still like with Evolution. I think he was like going off to do his own thing. I don't know if that meant that he was... I want to say he's also left Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, um, and he's going to be producing other probably like streaming programming. So I believe this was his last season on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Don't quote me on that. It may have just been an exit from Bravo, and he might be like Andy. Like when Andy left Bravo, he still stayed on to be an executive producer for Real Housewives and obviously still hosts Watch What Happens Live. He's just not um, – he just doesn't necessarily work in the programming or – casting necessarily for Bravo directly. Now he's independent. So anyway, in response to podcaster Christian Gray Snow, Kathy commented um, on the reunion trailer on Alex Baskin's post, why is Kyle upset and crying? Because obviously in the trailer we see Kyle and she's like, I just, I don't want to do a toast. I can't do a toast, Andy. And he's like, "Um, Douglas, Doug, what do you want to do? Kyle's a wreck. And then, you know, it fast, it rewinds. And then we see 
Garcelle jump in and she's like, you're going to hurt Kyle and she's your friend. And then we see Kathy and she's like, Rinna, you are the biggest bully in Hollywood and everyone knows it. And she does her little head bop and the serve and everything. And then she pulls out her flashcard and then she's like, and what you did to my sister? And then she pulls out the next flashcard and then she reads and then she looks up and she goes, and you drove Lisa of Vanderpump off the show? Well, now she's, like, telling Christian Grace Snow. She's like, I don't know why Kyle is upset and crying in the reunion trailer. She's like, I'm the one that was bullied and persecuted for 10 months. Just cruel and disgusting. But persecuted is spelled wrong. Which, when I read, I was like, oh, my God. No bueno, Kathy. No bueno. So then Kyle ended up jumping in in the comments as well. And she responded. And she was telling Kathy. She's like, you know exactly why. I don't think you want me to explain why. Yes, Kyle, I want you to explain why. I hear Kathy really takes a go at Kyle at the reunion. So yes, Kyle, please tell us why. Why? Tell us why Kathy is no Guayano. Tell us why Kathy doesn't have spell check on her phone. Tell us why Kathy's always commenting in the middle of the night on random strangers' Instagram posts. I know she's been commenting on some of my stuff, and I'm just like, oh my God. I just, every time I see her pop into my comments or like something on my page, I always just remember silence is golden. With like a knife. Silence is golden. So we really see their dynamic on full display at the reunion, Kyle and and Kathy. And I think, listen, all the sisters, Kyle, of all three of them, Kyle's probably the one that takes it the most. I feel like she's really the whipping post for Kathy and Kim. I know when Kim had her book and that was supposed to come out that... She, in the explanation or in the description of it, she was like claiming that she was the whipping post for her sisters. I actually think Kyle is the whipping post because we often see Kyle in this role of like wanting to make nice and wanting to make peace. And even though everyone wants to say, vile Kyle, vile Kyle, I actually think Kim and Kathy are probably the ones that were a little harsher. And and Kyle was as, she's is she the youngest or the middle sister? Kathy's the oldest. Is... I believe Kim or Kyle is the youngest. So Kim would be the middle sister, right? So I think Kyle is the one that was just like, I just want to make it nice. I want everyone to stop fighting. I just want peace. I want peace. I want peace. I feel like that's just very classic Kyle. Obviously, she's a bit of a potster and she definitely knows how to produce the show for sure. She's been on it long enough. But I also, characteristically, I see Kyle as somebody that wants to be a peacemaker. So, but also, can we talk about the fact that Kathy's like, I've been bullied for 10 months I feel like most people have rallied behind Kathy Hilton and have been defending Kathy Hilton on social media. I feel like that's why I take such a beating is because I'm one of the few people that isn't blindly defending her. Listen, she has her moments and I enjoy her when she has her moments, you know, when she has her Boyano moments. But like, I don't feel like she's been bullied for 10 months. Like, that's a bit of an exaggeration. I wouldn't classify the love and adoration people have been sending her way as bullying you can say lisa renna is definitely like a dog with a bone right like she's definitely like trying to hold Cal- kathy accountable and trying to hold her feet to the fire and but also like i have yet to see kathy deny anything that lisa renna has accused her of um or that she's just been accused of in general because obviously we know lisa renna is not the only one making these accusations sutton said that kathy yelled at her you know they're all everyone but crystal who you know crystal has Stockholm syndrome, Munchausen, I don't know what, safe home syndrome, I don't know what the fuck Crystal has, but anyway, maybe at the reunion, Kathy may deny some of these things, but so far, all we've seen her repeatedly say is, I said some things that I regret, but I've apologized, I, you know, said some things about my sister, but sisters have issues, but I've apologized, that seems to have been her party line all throughout, especially like in interviews and stuff, so... Well, actually, no. She told E! News on the Instagram Live that Dorit and and Rena were talking about that she was not yelling and throwing things. She's like, I just read something that I was yelling and throwing things. That is not me. But that was before the woman called her out for lying um, because she also in that same interview said that she was in the house alone and that she was scared of the wind. But we now know that that isn't the case. She wasn't scared of the wind. She was like ranting about Kyle um, and obviously the other women as well. And according to Rinna, she said, I will take them down. She was obviously yelling at everybody at the club in Aspen. So listen, I, 
I'm kind of over. I'm tired of Aspen at this point. Like, I feel like we've beaten a dead horse so much. And, like, it's glue at this point. Like Sutton said, it's glue. I'm kind of exhausted with Aspen. I don't really care to keep talking about Aspen. I'm more captivated captivated by the sister dynamic that they have. I did an episode last week. I believe it was last Monday with Neil Broverman. And we dove into the sisters and their dynamic a little bit further. I mean, could you imagine, though? Because we know originally before it was supposed to be Real Housewives of Beverly Hills that Kathy, Kyle, and Kim were supposed to have their own reality show together. And then ultimately, Kim and Kyle ended up going and doing Real Housewives of Beverly Hills together. It was originally Kyle. And the Kyle's like, I want to do it, but only if Kim does it. And so Kim agreed to do it. And they moved forward with it. So I would be, could you imagine, like, just the stuff that we've seen when Kim and Kyle were on the show together, and now Kim and Kathy on the show together, like, I feel like their dynamic is something that we will never, ever, ever truly understand. I feel like we can try to, right? We can guesstimate, but I don't think we really know what goes on behind closed doors with these sisters. I think Kim is definitely the most damaged. I think Kathy is the most... She has the biggest ego and I think can get away with the most because obviously she has the Hilton name behind her, right? She married into that family. So at this point, she can, she's can she gotten away with so much. She has power and privilege and money. Um, and I just, I, I feel like Kyle is constantly, I mean, I wonder why Kyle's riddled with anxiety, right? And I wonder why Kim was, you know, a, an alcoholic and struggled with addiction. Like, I just feel like these these women came from such a traumatic childhood. But I think Kim is probably the most tra- uh, the most traumatized. And that's probably why we see a lot of her outbursts on the show, right? She often seems like she's a cat caught in a corner and she just, like, lashes out at people. And people want to make Kim out to be, like, this vulnerable w- victim, right? Like, Kathy in the trailer, she's, like, she's telling Rena, Rena, and what you did to my sister? And I'm just like, guys... We all know that, like, Kim is Kim is not innocent. Like, Kim ate on Real House as a Beverly Hills. And Kim left no scraps. Like, not even a bone. Like, Kim even chomped up the bones on that, too. Right? She was, like, licking her fingers after she would come after some of these women. Like, Kim knew how to clear a room. She's a bad bitch, and I enjoy watching Kim. She's wildly entertaining. But she's by no means this, like, meek, innocent, like, defenseless victim. Like, Kim can throw down, and she can handle it. You know, and let's let's be clear, Kim instigated a lot of those fights and a lot of the conflict. She wasn't just on the receiving end of it. Right. She was she was pretty hardcore. Like she screamed at Ken. She's like, shut your damn mouth. You're a stubborn old man. Shut your mouth. And she told him to shut up and because she thought that Lisa Vanderpump was lying and he tried to defend Lisa Vanderpump when they were all like saying, oh, Lisa, we think you're lying about the stuff about Kyle and, and the tabloids. And then Kim jumped in defending Kyle. Well, actually, I don't think she was defending Kyle as much as she was just trying to, you know, ride harder on Lisa Vanderpump. But that wasn't self-defense. And she called Eileen a beast. And that wasn't necessarily self-defense. Like, Eileen was just trying to insert herself into the conversation. And she's like, I've had enough of you, you beast. Iconic line. Iconic. That just like slut pig. Iconic. It was iconic. I love Kim. I think she's a great reality star. But like, come on. She also, she started the fight, the argument in Amsterdam at the table. Like, yes, Lisa Rinna is the one that threw down the glass. But Kim started that because she was upset that Rinna was asking the other women about her sobriety. And she's like, why are you going around to everybody asking about my sobriety? And then Lisa Rinna's like, well, I was coming to you to ask about the sobriety. And listen, Lisa Rinna went hard and she broke the glass. And yes, that was crazy. And that's not to say Rinna's innocent in any of this either. But like, Kim is not defenseless. Let's be clear. Kim started the argument with Brandy on game night in season two her and Kyle were kind of being mean towards Brandy and Brandy's sitting there with her crutches and she's like what is your deal and then that's when she's like well at least I wasn't doing crystal meth in the bathroom all night long and then that's when Kim was like well you're a slut pig and she was like getting in her face and Brandy was ready to fight crutches and all and then Kim went and hid her crutches so Kim's not innocent Rena gave her the bunny for her grandchild and Kim gave it back to Rena and made her cry at the reunion Again, Rinna is not innocent. Rinna is definitely a reality TV villain for sure. And she definitely instigated a lot and stirred the pot a lot and all of that stuff. I love Kim. Kim is not an innocent victim. Because I know on Twitter everyone's like, but Kim was struggling with addiction and she was just defending herself. And I'm like, y'all, the way we like to rewrite history, Kim knew how to handle herself. Homegirl was savage. And I give it to her. Savage. I'm a savage. Classy, bougie, wretched, 
sassy, moody was happening. Oh, I actually don't think Kim is very classy, but she's definitely moody, and she's definitely a ratchet. I would say classless, moody, ratchet. So, I mean, oh, let's not forget when the, the dog incident at the reunion, when Kim was yelling at Kyle, and Kyle's like, your dog attacked Portia. And Kim's like, your daughter had a bite on her finger. Your daughter had a little bite on her fucking finger. And Kyle was like, it almost infected the bone. And Kim was just like, oh, shut up. I was like, really? Kim defended her dog over her niece. So let's not make Kim out to be a saint. Love Kim, but she ain't no saint. And Listen, have you seen her cameo? Kim looks like she's fucking close to death, okay? Like, let's be real. Kim looks like she's near death. Her cameo, like, we're fooling ourselves if you go and you watch her cameo, okay? Who knows where she's at right now? I love Kim. I hope she's doing well. I sent her L-O-V-E. I really do love Kim, and I have a lot of compassion for poor Kim. But I just think all three of the sisters are troubled in their own way, and they're not innocent in their own way. And I just think after reading House of Hilton, I have lots of empathy for all three of them. But I just feel like their relationship goes deep, you know? I feel like, but like, look at their history, right? Like, Kathy iced out Kyle when Mauricio left the firm and they didn't talk for years. Like, I've never understood the dynamic of just like getting upset with somebody and having an argument and icing them out. It's one thing if like somebody is like a toxic person and it's a toxic relative and you're just like, I can't keep getting treated this way by you. I have to set boundaries. And if you don't respect my boundaries, then I cut you out. But, you know, something like that, I just feel like is not something you cut family. My family just isn't like that. We don't cut people out. We're all very close. Even when we fight, we make up and we work through our issues we talk through them we work through them we know that we're blood at the end of the day um but again that's just my experience in my family that's just how we operate both on my dad's side and my mom's side like we were never raised to like cut out your siblings but I I don't think that there's ever been a level of toxicity where there would have that would have to be necessary or really ever be a consideration but like Kathy didn't allow Mauricio to attend Nikki's wedding and on top of that not just Mauricio it's fine to be like I don't like your husband he's not allowed to attend but she also didn't allow half of Kyle's daughters to come to the wedding either. I remember that was like a whole thing where I think Lisa Vanderpump was like, how do you not invite half? Like, how are, how do you select two daughters over the rest of the daughters? Like, how is that a thing? And Kyle's like, well, listen, I'm just, I want to make peace. I want to be good with my family. Um, And she chose to go to the wedding over, you know, even though half of her daughters weren't allowed to go. But Kathy literally had her own daughter kidnapped in the middle of the night and sent off to a boarding school while she was a teenager. I mean, and Kyle stole Kim's goddamn house. So I don't think any of them are innocent. None of them are innocent. But my heart does break for Kyle because I do feel like she wants to be the peacemaker where Kim definitely seems to be the instigator. And Kathy definitely seems to be the most um, no boyano and definitely the most manipulative of the three, in my opinion. But I will say this. Kathy popping off in the Instagram comments over the weekend. That was one that really did make me laugh. Um, So there's a common term that people use, and that's uh, child, C-H-I-L-E, right? It spells like chili, C-H-I-L-E, but it's pronounced child, like C-H-I-L without the D, which is supposed to be like child without the D, right? So people are like, ooh, child. Right. That's a common term that people like to use on the Internet. Um, And so there was one comment that Kathy responded to where someone used the term child. And Kathy was like, why does everyone keep saying chili? Like, what's the deal with chili? Is there a new BOGO lunch special at Chili's? So, (laughs) So I thought it was funny. And I laugh because like Kathy Hilton, I too at one point had that same moment where I had a friend that would always text me and she was always saying child, but she would always put a lot of ease at the end of it. And that was her way of saying child, like I- extending the child, but it was just a lot of ease. And so I was always like, what? Like chili, chili. Like I just, I didn't get it. Right. That was my dumb blonde moment. And then finally one day it clicked and I was like, oh, cause then I would actually, when I was in person with her, I would catch on to when I was like, oh, Oh, child, chili, got it, got it, got it. So I, Kathy, I can relate. I can relate, girl. I had the same moment. (laughs) It made me laugh. Listen, monster or not monster, whatever you want to think about Kathy. I think Kathy has her moments where she brings levity and she's just being herself and she's not trying to play up a character and she's not trying to play a punky dory where I just think she genuinely has these moments where I find her funny. Just like Kim. I find Kim wildly entertaining. Um... And listen, when Kathy makes me laugh, I laugh. And in this case, I thought that this was funny. Okay, Kathy, if you're listening to this, you made this faggot laugh. 
You gave this faggot a chuckle, okay? I know in, in past episodes I've said that I hate the word, or I don't hate it, but I don't really like the word F-A-G, um, which I obviously just said, but I apparently it's a thing that we do in the gay community where we use that term and it's kind of a way to reclaim that term. Um, and so we will call ourselves that so that, you know, it's kind of a term that we've kind of re- tried to re-own. I still don't really like the term. Um, I might not use it. I might use it. In this case, I was trying to be funny with it. But I'm just like, at this point, the, you call me everything else, right? You guys call me all the other names in the book, like literally everything else. What was I called over the weekend? Monkey pox spreader, stupid hoe, um, crusty twink, which to be honest, listen, I will say this. If at 29 years old, I can still be considered a twink, then damn it, I will take it. Because a twink is really just like somebody that's like young and slim and has like a boyish kind of appearance. Um, You know, you have a very youthful sort of slim, slender, petite sort of build that, you know, is boyish, right? So if at 29 years old, pushing 30, I'll turn 30 in June, if at pushing 30, I can still be considered a twink, then I will take it. Crusty is a little mean. That's where I draw the line. I don't think I'm crusty. I think I'm very well moisturized and very well hydrated. Um, I assume crusty means like crusty is then like there's a lot of like cum crust on you, which actually I will say this. I did learn this because as much as I was getting dragged on Twitter over the weekend, I also got some really nice messages as well. Like there was one guy that I used to like, you know, see. And then he's like, oh my God, I saw you on Real Houses of Beverly Hills. And I saw, I was like, oh my God, that's the apartment that I sucked his dick in. And I was just like, "Mm, that's not, (laughs) not, how how you been too? Thank you. Um, But there was one, one person that taught me about a cum tribute. And I've never, I didn't know what a cum tribute was. And he was like, do you know what a cum tribute is? And I was like, I don't. Enlighten me, please. And so apparently a cum tribute is where they pick a photo of you and they print it out and then they come on that photo and then they send it to you in tribute as if like, you know, like uh, I was just like, wow, I'm I'm very flattered. Thank you for such a tribute. Is there an altar that comes with this? Do you light some candles? Like, are they... Are they scented candles? Are they Jesus candles? I mean, who knows? Jesus might want to watch. I mean, he might be watching from afar. So, yeah. This twink, this fag, very much, you know, owning owning my cum tributes from over the weekend. So thank you for all the love. Okay, let's talk about Real Housewives of Potomac, shall we? Because Real Housewives of Potomac is popping off. So ahead of The Real Houses of Potomac season seven premiere, which aired last night, Sunday night on Bravo, the ladies were starting to call each other out, right? It is Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Um, Because today's Monday that this episode came out. But the, the premiere, season seven premiere came out on Sunday night. So... Mia Thornton, who was the newbie last season, posted on Twitter about Jacqueline Blake, who's the newbie this season, but she's only joining as a friend of. She's not a full-time cast member. I don't think there is a full time a new full-time cast member. We have Jacqueline, and then we also have Sharice. And Sharice was from, I believe, the first two, or was she in season three? She was definitely in the early seasons. She's one of the OGs of Potomac before she got fired, and now they brought her back in a friend of capacity. So, but we're focusing on Jacqueline. So Mia posted posted a video of Jacqueline fighting with a man, seemingly her partner, or I guess definitely her partner. I'm not, it's not sure if this is her husband or who this man is necessarily because we don't know when this video was filmed exactly. We don't see his face, so we don't really know who he is, but we do hear his voice and we know that he lives with her because there's a moment where she tells him that he should just leave. And he's like, I'm not leaving. This is my house. So, But again, it's uncertain of when this video was actually filmed. But Jacqueline is seen yelling at him, smacking him, hitting him, throwing things at him. At one point, she like grabs a high heel and she's hitting him with the high heel. And I was just like, ooh, that's got to hurt. You know, like that's the high heels. Like it's one thing to like slap somebody, but the high heel, like that's that's rough. And it was like a thick high heel, too. It wasn't like a cute little like louboutin with a little spike heel it was a a thick heel and it looked like you know that was that was some heavy duty stuff that was not like a little marshall's heel that had some real weight to it and listen i've had yeah we're not even gonna go there because i was gonna say i had a, a shoe follow me recently that was very thick and heavy and it was not fun um not thrown at me but like fell on me out of my closet 
Anyway, not a high heel. It was it was a Louboutin. It was, actually was a Louboutin. It was one of my spiky uh, my spiky black Louboutin loafers, and I didn't realize how heavy it was. Now I'm getting off track. But anyway, so we see her yelling at him, smacking him. He's holding the camera. He's filming her, saying that he doesn't want to have to call the cops. He doesn't want to have to send her to jail tonight, and she's just going off, right? She tells him that he better leave. He's like, no, this is my house. I'm not leaving. And he films her as she like walks away and walks up the stairs because he's like, look, at, I'm filming you. I'm filming you. And then she finally seems to like disengage and walk upstairs and, and it kind of ends there. So Mia posted this video and also posted a message tagging Bravo saying help is available and that she's taking a stand not to condone violence. And I guess she's telling Bravo not to condone violence either, saying that no one deserves the right to be treated this way and that she uh, will never deliberately inflict physical pain on another And that's when Dr. Wendy jumps in. Dr. Wendy joins the group point at this chat on Twitter. And Dr. Wendy's like, oh, really, Miss Mia? And she claims that Mia threw a drink on her during filming this season and hit her with her purse multiple times to the point where she broke three nails. Not one nail, not two nails, but three nails. Three. You guys, she broke three nails. And she called Mia the poster child for violence. Snap, snap, pat the puss. I was like, ooh, Mia's coming in. She's like, three nails, like my three degrees, and you hit me with your purse, period. And then Mia responded, and Mia was like, listen, I own being wrong, and I'm not trying to pretend to be perfect, but at least I took some self-accountability. And I guess Jacqueline isn't taking accountability. She's taking another swing. I don't really know. That's when Candace jumps into the game, right? And she jumps on Twitter and she's like, hold up, wait a minute, it's a mess. And she said, at this point, we should just skip to the reunion. Let's not even, let, let's go straight. Let, can we skip to the good part? She's like, let's not even do the season. Let's just go to the reunion and hash it out there. Because she says that, you know, y'all are, what did she say? Something about you guys are messy, yes, but also she's like, you guys are giving it all away, you know? She's like, come on, we have the trailer, This is Costco, right? You can have a sample, but we can't give it all away for free. Then nobody's going to buy the cow. So Jacqueline then chimed in, and she said that she's learned from the best, referring to Mia, I assume. Um, and that, you know, she, she's like, listen, I went to, co- I'm college educated. I own a home. I own land. I own my own career. And she's like, Mia is a fake boss and Mia is a fraud and she needs to focus on her own mess. And then she called Mia Pinocchio. I was just like, damn, this is getting messy. I saw the Pinocchio reboot on Disney Plus, and it wasn't that good. But if Mia wants to to relive it and and bring it back on this season of Potomac, then I'm I'm here for it. But anyway, the video of Jacqueline, as messy as this me- as this situation is, the video of Jacqueline is pretty bad, and it wasn't amped up for Bravo's cameras where I know not to give Mia a pass, but I know that, you know, when you're filming and there's cameras and you ha- there's this expectation for you to perform, like you can get a little feisty and caught up in the moment. But in this case, like Jacqueline was behind closed doors at home with some guy and it seemed to be some sort of domestic dispute. So it's interesting that Mia took to Twitter and I'm curious and decided to call it Bravo, but I'm curious to see how Bravo is going to react to all of this when they're going and what they're going to do about Jacqueline. And it also made me think, I wonder if this is part of the reason Jacqueline didn't end up getting a full-time housewife spot. She's only a friend of, because obviously this seems to be part of this season, the part of the storyline this season. So it seems like Mia and Jacqueline don't really get along and Maybe this has to do with why Jacqueline didn't end up getting um, her full time, her her champagne flukes. That's what they hold in Potomac, right? The champagne flutes. Listen, IDK, I don't know. All I know is I'm a crusty twink. Well, actually not a crusty twink. I'm a a pretty lubricated twink. I will say that. Um, I will say that. Okay, thank you guys for listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zag Peter. Hopefully you guys had a good time. Let me know what your thoughts were on the premiere of Real Housewives of Potomac. And let me know what you're most looking forward to seeing in the new uh, tra- in the new reunion, the first part of the reunion for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Because that airs on Wednesday. Potomac airs on Sundays. We also have Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City looks like it's going to be good this week. On That also comes out on Wednesday, right? It's interesting, though, that Beverly Hills has such high ratings. They keep 
bringing in over a mil and Salt Lake City keeps bringing in only like 600,000 which shows that like half of the audience is not tuning in for Salt Lake City which is interesting um, I actually have I liked last week's episode I thought it was good and this week looks even better because this is where we see Heather and Whitney bad weather they seem to be having some major issues so i look forward to to seeing that go down but anyway if you guys like me and you don't want to send me mean things you can tweet me or follow me or or just keep up with me at just plain zach all over the internet if you don't give a shit about me but you want all the latest reality tea then you can follow at no filter with zach on instagram be sure to stock up on No Filter Wine at nofilterwine.com. It's a housewives-inspired wine, 13% alcohol by volume, but less than a gram of sugar. Must be 21 or older to order. Go to nofilterwine.com and subscribe. Leave me a five-star rating. All right, guys. Love you. Mean it. Bye.